Okay, so here I am. I have my DNA results back. And I wanted to do this quick little video on YouTube showing and sharing my results with the world. I am not liking this lighting. Hold on one second. Okay, so that's a little better. So anywho, I wanted to make this video to share my DNA results. And I have to say that I am quite happy and surprised with them. <coughs> Excuse me. I uh, was not expecting the results that I got, but I mean in a good way. Um, they were better than what I expected. Um, they weren't exactly all that I wanted, but I'll explain that later. But they were they were better than what I expected, and I'm so excited and so happy that I did it. So quick history. Um, the reason why I did this is because I have always wondered as a child who the heck I was. I, for whatever reason, never really felt like connected to people around me or to the things around me. I mean, I can mingle. I'm the type of person I can be with myself. I can be with a crowd. It just depends on how I'm vibing that day. Um, but, you know, I nowadays I typically tend to like to chill by myself with my family because people are so crazy. And not just crazy, but they just have so much junk in their lives. Not to judge anybody, I'm just saying, like, they just have so much going on. And I just don't particularly want to subject myself to everything that people have going on in their life. I like to keep my peace. And there's certain things I just do not want to partake in. Um, so I'm very um, particular about my company, who I allow close in. I really don't have anybody close in me, to, I mean, to me, outside of my family. Um, I used to have a ton of friends or maybe not a ton, but, you know, half a ton of friends. Um, and slowly but surely over the years, they all began to dwindle themselves out of my life. It hurt at the time, but as it started happening more and more often, I got used to it. I can kind of almost see it coming, you know, and I just stopped caring at some point. I just was like, well, you know, whatever it is, what it is. They're not the people that need to be in my life anyway. So I just believe that y'all will put more people back in my life, the people that's supposed to be in my life. But anyway, I never really felt connected Sometimes I felt weird. Um, I've been called weird plenty of times. Um, I've always liked things that didn't necessarily seem to be the norm where I was. You know, these types of things, this is a norm in Africa. Not necessarily in America. I mean, you see a lot of people wearing it nowadays, but um, it's still not as common on the streets as it is in, say, Nigeria or Botswana or Zimbabwe or the Congo, anywhere like that. Um, you may see it more so in the Caribbean, absolutely more so in the Caribbean than you would here in America, which is odd to me sometimes, but it is what it is. So from a young child, I've been wondering who I was, you know, like, where do we come from? Um, my mother, um, her father, uh, was not in her life growing up. And so that left a boy like, okay, well, who was he? You know, I've seen pictures of him, but I didn't get a chance to meet him. And, um, I don't know. I just... I just didn't I just always felt like something else and um and then when I got about let's say about five years ago maybe a little more than that I was watching something on BET and I was watching the story of Sarah Bartman and I was just like yo I gotta go to Africa I'm so going to Africa like this is so going to happen I haven't gone yet but I believe I'm, I'm planning to go next year I'm, you know we'll be going next year Lord willing yeah i willing um so family members and I and um so anyway so since then I kind of was really on my tip like okay who are we in this African thing who are we I know we came from slaves and we just always heard the same old same old Black History Month came around it was always Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King you know the typical like no shade on the, those who those pioneers of Black African Americans because they did the thing but at the same time I was like, why are we always fed the same story all the time? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, white people or anybody else, but in this particular, I've lived around a lot of white people in America. White people get to know their history back to their kings and the king of Scotland and, you know, the Welsh king. And I'm just like, okay, well, who the heck are we? Why are we always got to hear just Rosa Parks? And if we hear, oh, you come from Africa, well, we're at in Africa. What are we doing over there? Who, you know, we didn't know anything about Africans. Um, or Africa or where we came from, what we did while we was living on that continent. So anyway, it just sparked a, a more interest in me. So I started listening to different songs and then um, and different things that would kind of educate myself. And 
Um, I remember putting on, what's that song? Black Gold uh, by Esmer Esper Esperanza Spalding. And I was watching a video for that and it had a lot of d different African um, pioneers in the video. And I started researching them and I began to just really fall in love with the researching of, of Africa. And I would just sit at work for 10 hours a day at the time when I was working back in corporate. And I would just sit at my desk for 10 hours a day while I'm working, have my headphones plugged in and just listening to YouTube videos, um, researching different people that I have just learned about in that video and researching about the history of Africa and Nigeria and all this other stuff. So long story short, it all of that, you know, that was back in 2014 when I saw that song, that video. And all of that from that time up to now, it brought me to where I am now, where I've learned about the history of who I am as a Hebrew Israelite, um, a Hebrew S, you know, from the nation of Israel, um, you know, all that spiel, nothing new for those who know what I'm talking about. So to get back on topic to what, well, to get more back, um, narrowed in on what I came here to do was that led me to do the DNA test. And I've always wanted to do it, but I was scared because I was like, what if they tell me something I don't want to hear? What if they tell me I'm not black or, you know, which I know I'm black, but you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of these videos I was watching, you see biracial people and they're like 60% black or some people like 40% black and 60% European, but they look like a biracial, what we would consider black white skin black person so I was just like I didn't know what I was gonna get so anyway I got my results in and I'm going to share them with you now let's see how I can do this one second okay so I went through 23andMe <coughs> excuse me and I don't have any type of program or software or just simply don't know how to switch my camera around so I can show you my screen. But you just have to trust what I'm saying. I ain't no liar. So my results came back and I am a total of 88% Sub-Saharan African and 10% European. Sorry for that noise that you heard that my air conditioning air condition just came on. Anyway, so the breakdown of it is European. I am Northwestern 7% European, which um, breaks down to British and Irish. I am part Irish. 3.4%. That's kind of exciting because I think Ireland is pretty. And, you know, just looking back into history about, you know, the blacks that ruled over in Europe and it's just phenomenal. I'm pretty sure they might be pairing this to the more the your the white people that live there now. Which is fine because I understand that unfortunately because of our disobedience as a nation we were shipped off here and we were given over into the hands of our enemies, the heathens. Some call them Edomites, but um you know the the heathens and they did number of things to us and so our blood mixed and I was really expecting to have a lot more than that because the typical African-American that I saw on YouTube had about 18 minimum percent up to 24 percent European in them and so I was expecting to have that I thought that was a bit high but I really was expecting to have about that so the fact that I'm 10 percent is like phenomenal and then the other portion portion of European that I have in me is broadly northwestern European 3.6 percent which means just over that whole Northwestern European, North, North, the whole part of Northwest Europe, I only match with like 3.6% of the DNA that's there, the mass of the collective DNA that's there. <clears throat> and then to break it down even further, um, I pretty much point back to British and Irish. The British is really, you know, come on, I mean, the, the Brits came over here. Um, so that's that. Uh, I'm also... Southern European 0.7% and then broadly Southern European 0.7% broadly European altogether 2.4%. So all of that comes together to equal 10.1%. I have no South Asian in me. I have 0.9% of Native uh, of East Asian and Native American. I am 0.5% Native American.
and I'm pretty sure they're testing that amongst what we consider or people consider Native American today, which are the lighter skinned ones, which are basically ancestors of, I mean, the, their ancestors are Mongolian in, invaders or immigrants that crossed over uh, from Asia over into the, to the Americas. Um, they are not speaking about, I don't believe, I'm pretty sure they're not speaking about the copper colored blacks, um, possibly even Hebrews um that were in the americas before any european or anybody ever set foot on this continent so that 0.5 percent is not really shocking to me my mother's father was native american he looked like a negro um a red negro not um like a red arab you know negro and wavy silky somewhat coarse um black hair very shiny black hair um so I don't know, I'm assuming that's partly where that came from. He might have, you know, a small mixture of the typical Native American in him. I'm not sure. But anyway. Southeast Asian, I am 0.2%. I am no East Asian, no Japanese, no Korean, no Yakut, no Mongolian, no Chinese, no broadly East Asian. Um, and broadly East Asian Native American, it says again, I'm 0.1%. I am no Middle Eastern and North African. And that is not referencing um, the typical, uh, I mean, that is referencing the typical Middle, Middle Eastern, North African look, which is more like that, that mixed Arab, you know, Persian type of, you know, look. Not black. Um, no, no Oceana in me at all. And I have 0.9% unassigned. I'm not sure what those would have fell into if they had been assigned to something, but it's less than 1%, so it doesn't matter. Or just that 1%, so it doesn't matter. The grand scheme of things, the key thing that I love is that um, my Sub-Saharan African DNA is 88.1%. That breaks down to 80.9 or 81% West African. Yup, yup. Central and South African, I am 4.3%. I have no East African in me. Period. 0%. So, like, no Kenyan, no Ethiopian, none of that stuff. And... Um, I am 2.8% broadly sub-Saharan African. And, and I am so stoked about this because I knew I was going to come back to West Africa because, you know, we were taken from the Kingdom of Judah on the west coast of Africa and Nigeria. And brought over here to the Americas as slaves, and um, I'm pretty sure if they were to dig, if they were to dig any deeper, they would find Ebo, and if they went any further than that, they would find Eber, and if they went any further than that, they would find Hebrew. Um, I am so stoked though, especially with this Central and South African, because all these countries that it included. Let me see if I can go back to that thing I was reading about it. It gave me a breakdown. Hmm. Hurry up. Let's see here. Okay. So it says here in this little note box here, Central and South African. <clears throat> Central Africa extends from the Central African Republic at its north to, which would be the Congo, at its north to Angola at its south. Southern Africa encompasses Namibia, South Africa, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. While the majority of its population is now composed of Bantu peoples, Central Africa is also home to many pygmy populations. Southern Africa was first peopled by pygmies, San and Khoisan. Hence my eyes. These hunter-gatherer populations still live in this region today. So I am in love with that because when I first started on this journey, and I started Googling different types of Africans and tribes to see who I look most likely, uh, who I look like the most and look closely to. I found the Khoisan or the San Bushmen, which is what white people call them. Um, but I, the Khoisan or the Hosa people. And I was like, yo, they look just like me. The lighter skin.
and even though I don't consider myself light skin I am lighter than you know a dark African or a dark um, black person you know Hebrew or whatever but I am um, to me I'm not light skin light skin to me it's like very fair yellow um, maybe even albino clearly but I'm a lighter brown um, some of them even appear to be a little lighter than me and I had these Asian shaped eyes like my whole life I've always been told you look like you Chinese and my mom told me when I was a baby a lady came up to her in the store I think it was a Chinese lady but she came up to her in the store I was like is her father Chinese my mom was like no my daughter's father is black and he has the same that they, they all my children have the same father I'm the lightest out of my um, family my mother is like just a tint darker than me um like that reddish brown and then my brother my father and my sister are more the dark brown medium chocolate brown um so anyway, I was so excited to find this because I was like, I knew I had some of this in me, the Khoisan. Oh my God, I just loved it. And um, I mean, that's just amazing to me. Then also what's fun to me is that Zimbabwe is where the Levitical Levi tribe is found. If you look up the Limba tribe. that's their dna was tested and it was proven that they go back to middle eastern and they've been saying that and their dna backed it up and proved it and they are known to be they have the priestly levitical gene i'm not sure what that is but they do have it and so you know to see that i'm in you know the region that comes from i mean the region that partial part of my dna comes from it includes Bantu peoples which is also known as you know hebrews zimbabwe with the levitical limba tribe is and then the Khoisan in South Africa, which is what I knew from the jump. I was out. I was, that was me. So I love that. I was so excited because most people would have like on their DNA, they would have like um, West Africa, then a breakdown to like Nigeria, Congo. I mean, not Congo, Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and like Mali or something. Um, Cameroon also. And I'm like, I didn't see none of that up here. I mean, that not to say that my populations don't come from those regions, but... I just found it amazing to see that Central and South African. I mean, that was just mind blowing to me. Mind blowing. Yes. And then the note for the broadly Sub Saharan African. It's really simple, really small, but it says the genetic diversity of Sub Saharan Africa reflects both the deep history of humans in the region and the recent migrations that have carried the diversity of West Af Western Africa. Wait, let me read that again. <laughs> the genetic diversity of Sub Saharan Africa re reflects both the deep history of humans in the region and the recent migrations that have carried the diversity of Western Africa to both Southern and Eastern Africa. Well, I don't have an East African in me, so I'm not Kenyan. I'm not Ethiopian or Ethiopian. Um, none of those other Eastern African countries. Um, I love that. So the other thing that I want to add is that they test for Neanderthal. And unfortunately, they found 33 variants in me. But, you know, that comes from our, our ancient old slave masters raping us um, and infiltrating their blood, to say it like nicely. in our royal hebrew bloodline or just pure uncontaminated human african quote-unquote african um blood and i'm not that happy about that but hey i mean at least it's very 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 small and what they said about this is that they even made note that said that i have less than 100 percent of the 23 andme customers um, meaning that they start at the lowest variance that they have as far as, you know, who they um, test for the lowest amount of variance. It starts at 100 and then it goes up to 200, 300 plus. I have 33. So I am one third of the lowest <laughs> amount of variance. So even though I didn't want any Neanderthal in me, I still find it very relaxing in the sense that the little bit that I do have is so minute that it's almost like 
non-existent, you know, because it says you have fewer Neanderthal variants than 100% of 23andMe customers. However, your Neanderthal ancestry accounts for less than 4% of your overall DNA. So even if I had 300 variants, it only counts for 400, 4% of my DNA. Well, I have 33 and that's like, like I said, it's way lower. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, that's amazing. I didn't want any, but the little that I do have, you know, hey, it's better than having 300. How about them apples? Okay, I had to find the next thing. <clears throat> the next thing was the Haplo group. And um, I didn't want to make this video long, but it is long. So I appreciate those who bear with me. <clears throat> but I want to get everything out. And I'm a very thor thorough and detailed person. So anyway, my I only can test my maternal at this point because I'm a female and I have XX. Once my father tests, I can get his Y chromosomal DNA and put it in here. And then I can really find out more about where we came from and where did I get such and such from. So my mother, my maternal haplogroup was L3B1A, which sounds a lot like E1B1A, which is the Y chromosomal Hebrew Kohen gene. Um, and the L3 class is what, from my research and study and realizing, um, what from my research and study is um, the Hebrew gene. So my mom gave that to me. And my mother's mother and her mother and so forth, back and forth, back all the way back to Eve. Um, even though it says here L3B1A is a subgroup of L3B. A maternal haplogroup in a, is a family of mitochondrial DNA defined by a particular set of genetic, genetic variants. Your maternal haplogroup tells you about your maternal line ancestors from your mother to her mother and beyond. So then, if you scroll down, it says the origin, though it originated in Western Africa, Apple group L3B is distributed widely across the continent today and extends into the Near East. L3B spread from Western Africa to the Near East after the Ice Age. L3B is one of the earliest haplogroups groups to migrate out of Africa. Example populations, excuse me, example populations, Bantu speakers and African Americans. So what I also found interesting is that it has a little map here and it shows you uh, where your um, L3B DNA, maternal DNA haplogroup um, kind of originated and where it kind of spread to. And it has a lot of Western Africa and also has a lot of it crosses over um, Southern Africa. And what I also found interesting is that it goes up into like Yemen and looks like, not sure what that would be, but it's like the Middle East probably Pakistan, something like that, Iran, I'm not sure. But then what also is funny is that it also has highlighted Israel. That is so amazing because we were taught all of our lives that only white people live where the true Jews were in Israel and that the Bible talks about the Israelites and they were white people. Well, how do I have a, a maternal half a group that goes for my mother, her mother and beyond that originated in Israel? Come on. That just doesn't make sense. So I'm excited that I have that and I can't wait for my dad to get tested and I can match up mine, what I have for my mother against what he gave me. So I'll have that L3B1A and I'm more than likely sure that my father will have the E1B1A, which is the Y chromosomal one. So that is extremely exciting, y'all. For real, for real. So yeah, that is all that it had to say. They just put a new report in there talking about shared relatives and whatnot and how they found let's see 1332 dna relatives in your d in your 23 andme dna family so what that means is that you and each of your dna relatives share identical segments of dna that were passed down to you to both of you from a shared ancestor close relatives share a lot of dna with you while distant cousins may share a single small segment. Hmm. So, I'm not too sure, 
you know what all of this means right now I have to take them a little bit more time to dig into it but um just interesting very interesting it says here compared to the average 23 and me customer your DNA relatives for are 45% more likely to have a gap between their two front teeth I have a small one 35% more likely to be a super taster I don't know what that is, but I guess that means you taste everything. You're very sensitive. Your taste buds, highly sensitive. 31% less likely to drink energy drinks. That is so good because I do not drink energy drinks at all. 28% more likely to be able to do side splits. Maybe if I tried, I might can do one. 27% more likely to have hair that becomes frizzy in humid weather. Yep, that's me. 27% less likely to less less likely to drink espresso drinks. I don't drink those. 26% less likely to have skydive. Don't want to do that. 24% less likely likely to have sweaty feet. Don't do that. 24% more likely to be able to do back then kick over. Maybe if I tried. 24% more likely to have worked as a lifeguard. 24% more likely to drink instant coffee. Mm. 23% more likely to to be able to do forward splits uh yeah okay they have a ton of these <laughs> 10 percent more likely to be able to sing back a note they have just heard that's definitely me <laughs> well i am not going to read all of these but anyway i just thought it was interesting so i just wanted to do a video and share that so I'm excited. If you haven't done your DNA test, get out there and do it, especially for black people, African American people. You know, we are Hebrews, but at the same time, you know, it's nothing like having your science DNA to prove it so that when somebody want to come in your face, you can say, eh, <laughs> um, here's the proof right here. And, um, you know, I was I was surprised. Like I said, I thought they were gonna lie to me. I thought they thought they were gonna tell me something crazy, like "girl, you from, you know, Australia or something." Which you know, I mean, black people originated and were we originated from Africa, the continent of Africa, Africa, um, the continent of Africa, Africa. But um, you know, we also were the first people everywhere, except for I don't know, maybe the Caucasoids. I don't know if we ever did all of that. Not that not that I can remember reading about. But anywho. So anywhere you go, you know, if you go back far enough, it's going to be black. The peoples are going to be black, you know, so it doesn't matter, but I'm excited. So I ain't going to talk anymore. This video is too long. It is 25 minutes, almost 26, um, but I had a good time. So if you haven't done it, do it. Do not be afraid. Do it, do it, do it. Get you some research on E1B1A, um, the Hebrew Kohen. Um, look up some stuff so that you can kind of know and have an idea of what you're going to be reading when you actually do it. So that's that, you guys. Peace out. Ta-da. Bye.